Get ready to blast off into the exciting world of rocket science. In this complete guide to rocket science, you'll discover the magic behind the science of sending spacecraft into the great beyond. From the history of rockets to the latest advances in propulsion, this video will ignite your curiosity and leave you in awe of the incredible achievements of humanity in space exploration. Just tighten your seatbelt and let's jump into the video. First up, we'll tackle the question that's been on everyone's minds, what is rocket science? Well, rocket science is a field of study that focuses on the design, construction, and operation of rockets and spacecraft. It involves applying the principles of physics and engineering to create vehicles that can travel through space. At its core, rocket science is all about understanding how rockets work. Rockets operate on the principle of Newton's third law of motion, which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This means that when a rocket expels gas out of its nozzle at high speed, the gas exerts an equal and opposite force on the rocket, propelling it forward. Rocket science involves designing and building rockets that are efficient, safe, and reliable. This requires a deep understanding of aerodynamics, thermodynamics, and material science. One of the key challenges of rocket science is achieving escape velocity. This is the minimum speed required for a rocket to break free from Earth's gravitational pull and travel into space. Escape velocity is a function of a rocket's mass and the gravitational force of the planet it is launching from. The heavier the rocket, the more force it needs to achieve escape velocity. In recent years, rocket science has also become a key driver of innovation and entrepreneurship. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are developing new rockets and spacecraft with the aim of making space travel more accessible and affordable. These companies are pushing the boundaries of what is possible and inspiring a new generation of scientists and engineers to explore the final frontier. First let's talk about the history of rocketry. Rockets have been used for centuries in warfare, entertainment, and scientific exploration. The story of rocketry begins in ancient China, where the first rockets were invented. These early rockets were simple devices made of bamboo tubes filled with gunpowder. They were used primarily for entertainment, in the form of fireworks and other pyrotechnic displays. It wasn't until the 13th century that rockets began to be used in warfare, as a weapon against invading Mongol armies. In the 16th century, rockets made their way to Europe, where they were used primarily for military purposes. During the Napoleonic Wars, rockets were used by the British Army to devastating effect, helping to turn the tide of battle. The Congrove rocket, named after its inventor, was one of the most famous rockets of this era. In the 20th century, rocketry took a giant leap forward with the development of the V-2 rocket by Nazi Germany during World War II. The V-2 was the world's first long-range ballistic missile and was used to devastating effect against Allied cities. After the war, the V-2 and its technology were seized by the United States and the Soviet Union, who used it as the basis for their own rocket programs. In 1950 and 1960, rocketry became a key tool in the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik, in 1957, followed by the first human in space, Yuri Gargarin, in 1961. The United States responded with the Apollo program, which sent astronauts to the moon for the first time in 1969. This space war led to a lot of innovation. Since then, rocketry has continued to evolve and advance. Today, rockets are used for a wide range of purposes, from launching satellites and exploring other planets to powering missiles and spacecraft. Rockets come in all shapes and sizes and are used for a wide range of applications. Let's take a closer look at some of the most common types of rockets and how they are used. Solid fuel rockets, these rockets are fueled by a solid propellant, 
which is packed into the rocket motor. When ignited, the propellant burns and produces hot gases that are expelled through a nozzle at the base of the rocket. Solid fuel rockets are simple, reliable, and have a high thrust to weight ratio, which makes them ideal for applications that require a lot of power in a small package. They are used for military applications, as well as for space launches. Liquid fuel rockets these rockets are fueled by liquid propellants, which are stored in separate tanks and then mixed together in the rocket engine. When ignited, the propellants react chemically and produce hot gases that are expelled through a nozzle at the base of the rocket. Liquid fuel rockets are more complex than solid fuel rockets but are also more versatile and can be throttled up or down during flight. They are used for space launches, as well as for satellite and missile launches. Hybrid rockets these rockets combine elements of both solid fuel and liquid fuel rockets. They use a solid fuel and a liquid oxidizer, which are stored separately and then mixed together in the rocket motor. Hybrid rockets are simpler than liquid fuel rockets and have a higher specific impulse than solid fuel rockets, which makes them more efficient. They are used for experimental and research purposes, as well as for some space launches. Each type of rocket has its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and the choice of rocket for a particular application depends on a variety of factors, including payload, distance, speed, and other requirements. And you'd be shocked to know there are some other types of rockets, including nuclear and electric rockets, which are still in the experimental phase of development. In recent years, researchers have been exploring new types of rockets that could potentially revolutionize space exploration. Two promising types of rockets are nuclear and electric rockets. Nuclear rockets Nuclear rockets use nuclear reactions to heat a propellant, which is then expelled through a nozzle to generate thrust. The advantage of nuclear rockets is that they have a much higher specific impulse than chemical rockets, which means they can achieve higher speeds and require less propellant. However, nuclear rockets also pose some challenges, such as safety concerns and regulatory issues. Currently, there are no operational nuclear rockets, but research is ongoing. Electric rockets Electric rockets use electricity to ionize a propellant, which is then accelerated through an electromagnetic field to generate thrust. The advantage of electric rockets is that they are very efficient and can achieve very high speeds over long distances. However, electric rockets also have some limitations, such as a low thrust-to-weight ratio, which makes them unsuitable for launching heavy payloads from Earth. Currently, electric rockets are used mainly for in-space propulsion, such as for satellite maneuvering and interplanetary missions. When it comes to understanding the basics of rocket science, Newton's laws of motion are essential. These laws describe the relationship between an object's motion and the forces acting upon it, and they apply to everything from the movement of planets in our solar system to the launch of a rocket into space. Newton's first law The first of Newton's laws of motion states that an object at rest will remain at rest, and an object in motion will remain in motion with a constant velocity, unless acted upon by a net external force. This law is often referred to as the law of inertia, and it helps explain why rockets must overcome a great deal of resistance to break free of Earth's gravity and enter into space. Newton's second law, the second of Newton's laws of motion states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting upon it, and inversely proportional to its mass. This law is often expressed as the equation, F equals ma, where F is the force applied to an object, m is its mass, and it is the resulting acceleration. For rockets, this law helps explain how much force is needed to propel the spacecraft forward and overcome the gravitational pull of Earth. Newton's third law. The third of Newton's laws of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This law is often referred to as the law of action and reaction, and it explains how rockets are able to generate the force needed to lift off the launch pad and enter into space. By expelling hot gases out of the back of the rocket at high speed, the rocket generates an equal and opposite force that propels it forward. Newton's laws of motion are critical to understanding how rockets work and how they are able to overcome the immense forces of gravity to enter into space. 
By using these laws to guide their design and engineering, scientists and engineers are able to create spacecraft that can carry humans and equipment to the far reaches of our solar system and beyond. Rocket engines can be classified into two broad categories, chemical and non-chemical engines. Chemical rocket engines Chemical rocket engines use a chemical reaction to generate thrust and are the most common type of rocket engine. They can be divided into three categories based on the physical form of the chemical propellant. Solid propellant rocket engines These engines use a solid propellant that is burned to produce thrust. Solid rocket engines are relatively simple and reliable, but they cannot be turned off once they have been ignited. They are often used in the boosters that help launch rockets into space. Liquid propellant rocket engines These engines use a liquid propellant that is mixed and burned to produce thrust. Liquid rocket engines are more complex than solid rocket engines, but they are more powerful and can be throttled and turned on and off as needed. They are often used in the main engines of spacecraft. Hybrid propellant rocket engines, these engines use a combination of solid and liquid propellants and can offer the benefits of both types of engines. They are less commonly used than solid and liquid rocket engines. Non-chemical rocket engines, non-chemical rocket engines use a source of energy other than chemical reactions to generate thrust. They can be further divided into three categories based on the type of energy used, nuclear rockets, these engines use nuclear reactions to produce heat, which is then used to produce thrust. Nuclear rocket engines are very powerful and can operate for long periods of time, but they are also very expensive and require special safety measures to be used. Electric rockets, these engines use electric fields to accelerate charged particles and produce thrust. Electric rocket engines are very efficient and can operate for long periods of time, but they are not very powerful and are typically only used for small spacecraft. Solar rockets, these engines use the energy from the sun to produce thrust. They are very efficient and can operate for very long periods of time, but they are not very powerful and are typically only used for small spacecraft. Kepler's laws of planetary motion are fundamental principles that describe the motion of planets and other objects in orbit around a star. They were developed by the German astronomer Johannes Kepler in the early 17th century based on the observations made by the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe. Kepler's laws have been foundational to the field of orbital mechanics and are still widely used in space exploration and satellite technology today. Kepler's first law of planetary motion states that the orbit of a planet around a star is an ellipse with the star at one of the two foci of the ellipse. In simpler terms, the orbit of a planet is not circular, but rather takes the shape of an oval. The Sun, or any other star, is located at one of the two foci of the ellipse and the planet moves around this center point in a predictable pattern. This law is significant because it provides a basic framework for understanding the motion of planets in our solar system. Kepler's second law of planetary motion, also known as the law of equal areas, states that the line connecting a planet to the Sun sweeps out equal areas in equal periods of time. In other words, a planet moves faster when it is closer to the Sun, and slower when it is farther away. This law provides a means of calculating the speed and direction of a planet at any given point in its orbit. It is also critical for understanding how to change the trajectory of a spacecraft by using the gravitational forces of planets to accelerate or decelerate. Kepler's third law of planetary motion also called the law of harmonies, states that the square of the period of revolution of a planet around the Sun is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of its orbit. Simply put, the farther a planet is from the Sun, the longer it takes to complete one revolution. This law allows scientists to calculate the distance of a planet from the Sun and the length of its year, given its period of revolution. It is also essential for calculating the orbits of spacecraft and satellites.
Are you ready to explore the mysteries of rocket science and discover the secrets of space travel? Well, we have some exciting news for all you curious minds out there. Our brand new app, Cognoplus, is now offering a comprehensive course on rocket science. From the history of rockets to cutting-edge propulsion systems, this course is packed with fascinating insights and mind-blowing discoveries that will leave you inspired and energized to pursue your dreams of space exploration. So why wait? Download Cognoplus today and join us on this thrilling journey into the final frontier. Now let's jump into the satellite technologies. Satellites are man-made objects that orbit the Earth or other celestial bodies. Satellites serve a variety of purposes, from providing communication and navigation services to scientific research and military operations. There are several types of satellites, each designed for specific purposes. Geostationary satellites Geostationary satellites are placed in an orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 35,786 km. These satellites are in a fixed position relative to the Earth, and their orbital speed is synchronized with the rotation of the Earth. Therefore, they appear to be stationary from the ground. Geostationary satellites are primarily used for telecommunications, broadcasting, and weather forecasting. Low Earth Orbit Satellites Low Earth Orbit LEO, satellites are placed in an orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 160 to 2000 km. These satellites are used for a variety of purposes, including remote sensing, military surveillance, and scientific research. The International Space Station is an example of a LEO satellite. Medium Earth Orbit Satellites Medium Earth Orbit MEO, satellites are placed in an orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 2,000 to 35,786 km. These satellites are primarily used for Global Positioning System GPS, services. Polar Orbiting Satellites Polar orbiting satellites are placed in an orbit around the Earth from pole to pole. These satellites are used for weather forecasting, environmental monitoring, and scientific research. Sun-synchronous satellites Sun-synchronous satellites are placed in an orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 600 to 800 km. These satellites are designed to keep the same angle between the Sun and the satellite as the Earth rotates, which enables them to pass over any given point on the Earth's surface at the same local solar time each day. Sun-synchronous satellites are used for remote sensing, weather forecasting, and scientific research. Communication satellites Communication satellites are placed in geostationary or LEO orbits and are primarily used for telecommunications, broadcasting, and internet services. These satellites are equipped with transponders that receive and transmit radio signals, which are then relayed to ground-based stations. Navigation satellites Navigation satellites are used for global positioning and navigation services, such as GPS. These satellites are typically placed in MEO orbits and are equipped with atomic clocks and receivers that communicate with GPS receivers on the ground. Earth observation satellites Earth observation satellites are used for remote sensing and environmental monitoring. These satellites are placed in LEO or polar orbits and are equipped with cameras and sensors that capture images and data about the Earth's surface and atmosphere. Military satellites Military satellites are used for intelligence gathering, reconnaissance, and communication purposes. These satellites are typically placed in LEO or geostationary orbits and are equipped with advanced cameras and sensors. Orbital mechanics for satellites Orbital mechanics is a fundamental aspect of spaceflight and is essential in determining the behavior and trajectory of satellites. A satellite's orbit is defined by a set of parameters known as its orbital elements. These include the semi-major axis, eccentricity, inclination, argument of periapsy, and longitude of the ascending node. The satellite's motion is determined by the gravitational forces acting on it, primarily from the Earth and the Moon.
To maintain a stable orbit, a satellite must maintain a balance between its centripetal force and the gravitational force acting on it. If the centripetal force is too low, the satellite will fall towards the Earth, while if it is too high, the satellite will be thrown out of orbit. Satellites can be placed into different types of orbits depending on their intended purpose, such as geostationary orbits for communication satellites, low Earth orbits for Earth observation, and polar orbits for scientific research. One of the most critical factors in orbital mechanics is the speed required for a satellite to achieve and maintain its desired orbit. This speed, known as the orbital velocity, depends on the altitude and mass of the satellite and the mass of the body it is orbiting. To achieve the required velocity, rockets are used to launch the satellite into space. The stability of a satellite's orbit can be affected by various factors such as atmospheric drag, solar wind, and gravitational perturbations from other celestial bodies. As such, satellites need regular adjustments or maneuvers to maintain their orbits. This is done by altering the satellite speed and direction of motion using thrusters or reaction wheels. Two common maneuvers used in orbital mechanics are the Hamann transfer and the bioelectric transfer. The Hamann transfer is a two-burn maneuver used to transfer a satellite from one circular orbit to another by parsing through an intermediate elliptical orbit. The bioelectric transfer involves two separate burns, the first to raise the satellite to a higher altitude, and the second to circularize its orbit at the new altitude. Launch of satellites One of the most common methods for launching satellites is using a rocket. A rocket is a powerful vehicle that is capable of reaching high altitudes and speeds. Rocket launches typically take place from a launch pad, which is a specialized facility designed to provide the necessary support and infrastructure for the launch. Before a rocket launch can take place, engineers must carefully calculate the trajectory of the rocket and ensure that it is capable of reaching the desired altitude and speed. Another method for launching satellites is using specialized aircraft known as a carrier plane. This type of aircraft is capable of carrying a rocket to high altitudes before releasing it. The rocket then ignites its engines and continues on its journey into space. Carrier planes are often used for launching small satellites that do not require the power of a full-sized rocket. One of the biggest challenges of launching satellites is ensuring that they are placed into the correct orbit. The orbit of a satellite determines its path around the Earth, as well as its altitude and speed. To place a satellite into the correct orbit, engineers must carefully calculate the necessary speed and trajectory for the rocket or carrier plane. Let's discuss the mechanical properties of aerospace materials. The mechanical properties of materials refer to their behavior when exposed to external forces. There are several mechanical properties that are important for aerospace materials, including strength, elasticity, ductility, toughness, and hardness. Strength Strength is the ability of a material to withstand external forces without breaking or deforming. The strength of aerospace materials is critical for the design of components that will be exposed to high forces, such as the forces generated during takeoff and landing. The strength of a material can be measured in terms of its tensile strength, compressive strength, or shear strength. Tensile strength is the maximum stress a material can withstand before breaking when subjected to a pulling force, while compressive strength is the maximum stress a material can withstand before breaking when subjected to a pushing force. Shear strength is the maximum stress a material can withstand before breaking when subjected to a twisting force. Elasticity Elasticity is the ability of a material to return to its original shape after being subjected to external forces. This property is important in aerospace materials, as components need to withstand repeated stresses without permanently deforming or breaking. The elasticity of a material is determined by its modulus of elasticity, which measures how much a material will deform under stress. Ductility Ductility is the ability of a material to deform without breaking when subjected to external forces. 
This property is important in aerospace materials as components need to be able to bend and flex without breaking. The ductility of a material is measured in terms of its elongation or strain, which measures how much a material will stretch before breaking. Toughness Toughness is the ability of a material to withstand external forces without breaking. This property is important in aerospace materials as components need to be able to withstand impacts and other forms of damage. The toughness of a material is determined by its impact strength, which measures how much energy a material can absorb before breaking. Hardness Hardness is the ability of a material to resist deformation when subjected to external forces. This property is important in aerospace materials, as components need to be able to withstand wear and tear from repeated use. The hardness of a material is measured in terms of its resistance to indentation or scratching. Now let's discuss some of the most commonly used materials in rockets and spacecraft and their properties. Aluminum Aluminum is a popular material used in rockets and spacecraft. It is lightweight and has good strength to weight ratio. Aluminum is also easy to work with and is relatively inexpensive. However, it has poor thermal conductivity, which makes it less suitable for high temperature applications. Titanium Titanium is another material commonly used in rockets and spacecraft. It has a high strength to weight ratio and is resistant to corrosion, making it an excellent choice for applications where weight and durability are critical factors. Titanium can also withstand high temperatures and radiation, making it a suitable material for use in spacecraft. Carbon fiber Carbon fiber is a strong and lightweight material that is commonly used in rockets and spacecraft. It is made by weaving together carbon fibers and bonding them with a the resin. Carbon fiber is known for its high strength to weight ratio and can withstand high temperatures and radiation. Ceramics Ceramics are a group of materials that are known for their ability to withstand high temperatures and harsh environments. They are commonly used in rocket engines and heat shields where high temperature resistance is critical. Ceramics are also lightweight and have excellent thermal and electrical insulation properties. Refractory metals Refractory metals are metals that have high melting points and are able to withstand high temperatures. Tungsten, for example, is a refractory metal that is commonly used in rocket engines and other high temperature applications. It has a high melting point, high density, and is resistant to corrosion. In Conal, Inconal is a family of nickel-based alloys that are commonly used in high-temperature and high-stress applications. Inconal alloys have excellent resistance to corrosion, oxidation, and high-temperature environments. They are commonly used in rocket engines and other high-temperature applications. Factors in material selection for aerospace applications when selecting materials for aerospace applications, there are a number of factors that must be taken into account. These include performance requirements. The materials used in aerospace applications must meet strict performance requirements, including high strength, durability, and resistance to heat and radiation. They must also be able to withstand the extreme stresses and strains of takeoff, flight, and re-entry as well as the harsh environment of space. Weight Weight is a critical factor in aerospace design, as reducing the weight of a vehicle can improve its performance and reduce fuel consumption. The materials used must therefore be as lightweight as possible, while still meeting the required performance specifications. Cost is also an important factor in material selection, as aerospace applications can be very expensive. The materials used must be cost-effective and able to meet the required performance specifications within the available budget. Availability The availability of materials can also be a limiting factor in material selection, as some materials may be difficult to obtain or may be subject to export controls.
Human spaceflight is the activity of sending humans into space, either for scientific research, exploration, or commercial purposes. It requires a specialized type of spacecraft designed to sustain human life in the harsh conditions of space. The first spacecraft designed for human spaceflight was the Soviet Vostok spacecraft, which carried Yuri Gargarin, the first human to travel to space, in 1961. The Vostok spacecraft was a small, single-person capsule that had just enough space for the astronaut to sit upright in a reclined position. It was a simple design with limited functionality, only allowing Gargarin to perform basic tasks such as monitoring his instruments and making observations of Earth. Since then, spacecraft for human spaceflight have evolved significantly. The most common spacecraft used for human spaceflight today is the Soyuz spacecraft, also designed by the Soviet Union. The Soyuz spacecraft is a three-person capsule that has been used to transport humans to and from the International Space Station since the early 2000s. The spacecraft has several features that enable humans to survive and work in space for extended periods. These include an environmental control and life support system that regulates temperature, humidity, and air quality, and a waste management system that collects and stores human waste. In addition to the Soyuz spacecraft, other types of spacecraft have been developed for human spaceflight. The Space Shuttle, which was in operation from 1981 to 2011, was a reusable spacecraft that carried up to seven people and was used to launch and retrieve satellites, conduct scientific experiments, and assemble and repair the ISS. More recently, private companies such as SpaceX and Boeing have developed spacecraft for human spaceflight. SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft, which made its first crewed flight to the ISS in 2020, is a four-person capsule that can be launched on a Falcon 9 rocket. One of the most important features of a spacecraft for human spaceflight is its ability to protect astronauts from the harsh conditions of space. The most significant danger is radiation, which can cause cancer, genetic mutations, and other health problems. To protect astronauts from radiation, spacecraft are equipped with shielding materials such as water, plastic, and metals like aluminum and titanium. The thickness and composition of the shielding materials are carefully chosen to provide maximum protection while keeping the weight of the spacecraft as low as possible. A spacecraft is an isolated environment where the survival of human beings depends on the proper functioning of various life support systems or LSS. These systems provide a comfortable living environment, ensure the availability of breathable air, and the supply of water, food, and waste management. The performance and reliability of LSS is crucial to human spaceflight. The life support system of a spacecraft consists of several components that are designed to maintain a comfortable living environment, provide breathable air, water, and food, and manage waste. The main components of a life support system are air management systems, water management systems, food management systems, and waste management systems. The air management system provides the crew with breathable air by controlling the concentration of gases and particles. The concentration of carbon dioxide is continuously monitored to prevent it from reaching toxic levels. The air is also filtered to remove dust, microorganisms, and other particles that can cause health issues. The oxygen supply system is designed to provide the crew with breathable air. The system includes an oxygen generator or an oxygen storage tank that is used to supply the required amount of oxygen. The water management system is responsible for providing water for the crew to drink, bathe, and cook. Water is a critical resource in space and the life support system must recycle water to reduce the amount of water that needs to be carried on a spacecraft. The water management system includes a water filtration system that removes impurities and a water recycling system that uses several processes, including distillation and ion exchange, to purify the water. 
the food management system provides the crew with nutritious and safe food that meets their dietary requirements. The food is stored and prepared in a hygienic environment to prevent the growth of microorganisms. The food management system includes a food storage system, a food preparation system, and a waste management system. The waste management system is responsible for collecting, storing, and processing the waste generated by the crew. The waste includes human waste, food waste, and other solid waste. The waste management system includes a toilet system that collects and stores human waste, a food waste system that collects and stores food waste, and a solid waste system that collects and stores other types of waste. The waste is processed using different methods, such as incineration or compaction, to reduce its volume and make it easier to store. The performance and reliability of life support systems are critical to human spaceflight. The failure of these systems can cause serious health issues or even death. So, the development of life support systems requires rigorous testing and validation to ensure their safety and reliability. Human spaceflight has come a long way since the first human, Yuri Gargarin, went to space in 1961. Today, humans are living and working on the International Space Station ISS, and private companies are working on launching people into space for tourism. However, there is still much to be explored and discovered in space, and the future of human spaceflight and space exploration is both exciting and challenging. One of the most significant goals for the future of human spaceflight is the exploration of a Mars. NASA and other space agencies have been planning missions to Mars for decades, and several robotic missions have already been sent to study the planet. The ultimate goal is to send humans to Mars to explore, conduct research, and potentially establish a permanent presence on the planet. To achieve this goal, significant technological advancements will be necessary. These include developing new spacecraft and propulsion systems that can travel long distances through space, developing lightweight and durable materials that can withstand the harsh conditions of space and Mars environment, and developing new life support systems that can sustain humans for extended periods in space and on Mars. Additionally, advanced robotics and artificial intelligence will play a critical role in the exploration of Mars and other planets. Another significant challenge facing human spaceflight and space exploration is space debris. Over the years, thousands of satellites and other objects have been launched into space, and many of them have become defunct or obsolete, creating a significant amount of space debris. This debris poses a risk to current and future missions, as well as to the astronauts on board the ISS. Solving this problem will require developing new technologies for tracking and removing space debris, as well as designing spacecraft that can withstand impacts from space debris. In addition to Mars, other destinations in space are also being considered for exploration, such as asteroids and the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. These destinations offer unique scientific and exploration opportunities, such as studying the origins of the solar system and potentially discovering new resources that could be used in space. The commercialization of space is expected to grow significantly in the coming years. Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are already developing technologies to make space tourism a reality, and there is potential for space-based manufacturing and resource extraction which could have significant economic and technological benefits. The future of human spaceflight and space exploration is inspiring, but it is also challenging. It will require significant investments in technology, research, and development, as well as international cooperation and collaboration. However, the potential rewards are enormous, from advancing scientific knowledge to opening up new economic opportunities and pushing the boundaries of human exploration. And if you are ready to dive deeper into the mysteries of rocket science and discover the secrets of space travel, our brand new app, Cogniplus, is now offering a comprehensive course on rocket science. 
From the history of rockets to cutting-edge propulsion systems, this course is packed with fascinating insights and mind-blowing discoveries that will leave you inspired and energized to pursue your dreams of space exploration. So why wait? Download CogniPlus today and join us on this thrilling journey into the final frontier. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep your eyes on the skies.